Hey guys, it's Ornlu, and uh, when this video is going live, it will be the beginning of the Red Bull Wallolo Legacy $200,000 AOE2 tournament, and that tournament is being played in Empire Wars, as the title of the tier list indicates, and I thought that it would be a very opportune time to go over my personal uh, Civ tier list for the game mode, especially when considering the maps that will be played for the tournament. That way, you know, we can go into the tournament having a good idea of what's good and why they're good and the opposite. And also, when I am inevitably wrong, you can all point to this video and make fun of me for being so. So, with that in mind, um, I do just want to say that before we start, I will be casting the Red Bull Wololo tournament. No, I was not invited, but uh, they were at least nice enough to make it open streaming. So on my Twitch channel, which is in the uh, description to every single video, I will be casting the event and it should I should be live when this video goes live. So that sellout aside... Let's sort of get right into this. Now, Empire Wars, if you're not familiar, is essentially just a sped up version of RM. Just in case you're not familiar with it, I can show you guys uh, what you have going on. Essentially, you start in the Feudal Age with 28, or since we are Mayans, 29 villagers. You start with several houses, a blacksmith, importantly, uh, a barracks. You got three lumber camps, a couple farms, uh, sheep. You typically have six of in the Red Bull Wallow maps. Uh, and then you have your regular forage bushes. Uh, you got some villagers on gold and whatnot. So other than that, everything else is the same as RM. Uh, but just with these few changes to speed up the gameplay, make it more esportsy. So that's just in case you're not familiar with Empire Wars. Now, in case you're not familiar with the maps that will be played uh, for the event, um, I'm not going to go over all of them in detail. Um, you should be familiar with at least some of them, probably. Uh, Acclivity, it's been in the Red Bulls for a while. Aggressive, uh, like, archery sort of map. Arabia, it's Arabia. Atacama, you guys, I'm sure, know it from the map pool. Very, very open map with wood in the middle. Enclosed, it's been in Red Bull tournaments before. You can, uh, like, wall yourself in early on, but you the gold is all very exposed, and there's, like, this uh, rocky terrain you can't build on. Frigid Lake, you have the start where the TC in the shallows, so you can't uh, build farms around it. Uh, Kawasan has the forage bushes in the middle and the two ponds. Morass is a new map. Essentially, it's wood in the middle, really open, and there are lots of shore fish in the middle as well, so lots of aggression. Northern Isles, um, it's been in Red Bull Rolos previously. It's essentially team islands, but with a big island in the middle with gold and stone. Yes, it looks like a Pokeball. Uh, Outcrop is actually uh, a really interesting new map. Uh, you have like a little bit of gold in your sort of like hourglass shape thing, uh, but then you uh, have most of the extra gold and stone uh, on the sides. Uh, shoals, uh, you have a little bit of water in the middle. There are only shorefish in it, though. Uh, so most of the fighting is on the two sides, which have the extra uh, gold and a little bit of stone as well. Um, so a lot, there's a lot of resources on that map, so they, they tend to go late. And then you have the Bull, which is the uh, super, super aggressive map. Lots of towering, all the gold's in the middle, pretty much. All the stone is in the middle, and then there's like some shorefish here and there. So those are the maps. They all tend to be in the more aggressive family. So with that context in mind, let's just sort of do our general tier list that we have for these civilizations. Alrighty, let's get right into this. Aztecs, do they get their Aztec privilege? You bet they do. Easy S tier for Aztecs. So Empire Wars with these maps is fundamentally an aggressive feudal age to like castle age centric game type and Aztecs thrive in these settings. Uh, you have the faster production. It's really in start important that you start with the barracks in this game mode because you can just produce eagle warriors right away. And that's something that all the American civs have going for them, but Aztecs especially have that faster production uh, and they can just apply pressure and keep on going and keep on going and keep on going. Expect to see the civilization a lot on a variety of aggressive maps for the same reasons you see them in RM. Oh yeah, notably, uh, you do still start with your extra 50 gold, um, and I'll try and point out the differences that we have for uh, between RM and, uh, and Empire Wars that we have as we go through the civilizations. Bengalis, they did get buffed in a recent patch. They get their two extra villagers. I'm still putting them in the C tier because they're fundamentally too slow of a civilization for the maps that we have. 
if you were playing Empire Wars on like Arena, and Bengali's actually become pretty good because Bengali's normally don't have an eco bonus in the Dark Age, but starting with two extra villagers with no penalty would be really handy. However, these maps are all quite aggressive, and Bengali's with their lack of mobility due to missing knights, having just kind of mediocre uh, light cavalry and no cav archers or anything like that, there are just other civs that can do that better. That said, we may see them in some corner cases where you can potentially go for some Bengali uh, like elephant archers for locking down a position because they are difficult to get rid of. I still don't think we're going to see a whole lot of Bengalis in the tournament. Berbers going to be going in the A tier. Now, a theme that we will see throughout this tier list is that civilizations that don't have Dark Age bonuses tend to do better in Empire Wars because, you know, skipping the Dark Age means you don't have to worry about that whole issue. Now, it's true that Berbers also don't really have anything going for them in the Feudal Age, but it does mean you get to Castle Age more quickly, and that's where Berbers shine. Also, in these sort of aggressive settings, we see a lot of triple stable knights. Uh, we saw a lot of Berbers on Outcrop, if I recall correctly. Uh, a lot of Camel Archer play, uh, great for locking down certain locations as well, and just super mobile, flexible at all stages of the game once you get to the Castle Age, and they're just going to be good on a variety of different maps. Uh, not quite S tier, just not with that insta-feudal age uh, power spike, but still enough Castle Age pressure and all the way up to post imp is fantastic for the Civ. Uh, Bohemians are going to be going in the B tier. They do like the Feudal Age start. You get your gold mining and stone mining upgrade for free. Um, you don't get to make use of the cheaper blacksmith, whatever. Um, the big thing is that you don't have great cavalry with the sieve, and these maps are all pretty much in the open family of maps, so kind of like Bengalis that prefer more closed maps. So do Bohemians, but of course, if we're playing a more like late game oriented map, like maybe Shoals or something, we might be seeing uh, trying to camp and get to Hofnitza because uh, Halb Hofnitza or maybe Champ Hofnitza is still one of the best army comps out there. Britain's gonna be in the A tier. Uh, they don't get quite as many sheep as normal. I mean, you only get six sheep instead of eight normally. Uh, they're still a really good sieve. Uh, you have the faster working archery ranges. And something that we'll see a lot in a ton of the Empire Wars maps, Acclivity is especially uh, memorable for this, but it can be applied to pretty much uh, all the maps. Getting to Castle Age quickly and going for a crossbowman timing is super good in Empire Wars and on these Red Bull maps. That's because they tend to be, you know, open, but with fairly wallable small woodlands, like a bunch of smaller woodlands. And that sort of play is what makes or it, it, it makes these fast castle crossbow timings really, really deadly. A lot of selling stone to the market. Gamer Legion did this a ton back in the last tournament. We could be seeing it from tons of other players, like Sato, I'm sure, is going to go for this a lot as well. It's just super powerful, and Britons are one of the best civs at executing this, being able to shoot over all of those wood lines. Like, if you think back to maybe, what, like a year ago on Arabia, we had the very, like, fast castle crossbow-centric meta, and, and it's for, like, the same reasons here. Having be, Being able to range over walls is very helpful when knights can't break through those. And Britons able to drop down extra TCs as they want to. They can play the boom game. They can play the one TC aggression game. Fast working ranges. All of that stuff is super good. Bulgarians also going to be going in the A tier. Um, Bulgarians, again, no Dark Age bonus. Hooray, Empire Wars. Now, you don't really get to make use of the uh, swordsman like the free swordsman upgrades, uh, simply because you can't go for like men at arms towers in Empire Wars. You just start in the feudal age and that's too slow. Uh, but maybe if you're versus an American Civ, you can just make some swordsmen without too much issue. The big thing is you start with that blacksmith and you get blacksmith upgrades at half cost and they uh, research really quickly. Now this makes going for a ton of all in scout plays in the feudal age super good. You can pick up those uh, upgrades really quickly. And then, you know, spam all your cavalry units, and then you hit mid-game, and then you can drop crep posts to continue to secure map control, and just sort of keep that ball rolling aggressively. You have cav archers that are decent that you can go for. Yes, you don't have crossbowmen, so you're probably going to see Bulgarians on the more open maps, like, say, an Atacama, um, or other such maps, uh, maybe Morass as well, a fair amount. Uh, but that is, again, the sort of thing that Bulgarians will like doing in these settings, and they're going to be super good at it. So... Bulgarians are one of those civs that benefit from being an Empire Wars as opposed to RM in the context of aggressive maps. The civ with the opposite case is actually going to be the Burgundians. We're going to be going in the B tier. Now, you don't start with your uh, lumber camp 
and like mill upgrades research. So you have to get horse collar and double bit axe still, even though you can get those upgrades in the Dark Age with Burgundians. So you lose a lot of that power spike. Burgundians like the slower starts of RM because you can get double bit axe super early. You can get horse collar before you seed a single farm. And you're just not really as able to do that in Empire Wars because you still start with your standard uh, 200 wood, 200 food, 100 gold, and 200 stone. So you don't often have the resources to get those eco upgrades, even with that Burgundian discount super early. That said, if we're playing a map like Enclosed, which is going to be a bit more on the passive side, then Burgundians could perhaps chill a little bit, hang back, and then get their super powerful Castle Age rolling. You have your eco upgrades, maybe pick up some relics, go for Cavalier into Coustier. Burgundians can still do all of that just fine. It's just not quite as good as an RM. Uh, Burmese is going to also be going into the B tier, perhaps a little bit surprisingly. So uh, again, Burmese no real Dark Age bonus, so you get the free Lumber Camp upgrades right away, so you can perhaps a bit more easily afford to go for whatever opening you feel like. Uh, no, you can't really make good use of your Men at Arms, which is a bit of a bummer. But still, your Castle Age can be quite strong. Rombai, Monk, Siege, lots of Knights, all of this can be quite good. Yes, your Crossbowman play is not super good. Your skirmishers are a little bit sad, but you still have enough deadly options that I think Burmese can be a tough sieve to deal with in certain cases. I, I wouldn't uh, count these guys out. We might see them coming in at the edge of certain sieve drafts. Uh, I mean, that's not going to be like a super high tier pick, but again, in the right situations, especially against those melee heavy sieves like, you know, Franks, Bulgarians, Teutons... Uh, you know, Lithuanians, maybe even Magyars, Malians, like those guys, um, Burmese tend to have very strong matchups because Arambai and Monks can be tough to deal with. And then you have your strong late game Halibs, Hussars, uh, all that good stuff as well. Byzantine's gonna be in the A tier, another sieve that doesn't mind skipping the Dark Age. You can go for your cheap trash right off the bat, and then from there you can just kind of hang back, chill, and then go for your, you know, either fast Imperial Age timings and Arbalests, or you can go for uh, just playing the super late game, go for cataphracts and a bunch of skirmishers or whatever. Uh, Byzantines are good at what they're always good at doing, and the fact that you don't have to worry about Dark Age eco bonuses affecting the game is just another notch in the Byzantine rifle. Celts, gonna be going to the B tier. Um... We might see them again in like certain corner cases of drafts. Like the A tier sieves we're going to see in the drafts like really often. Uh, Aztecs or and the S tier sieves are going to probably be like banned a lot or, um, you know, just picked super high up. Celts, we might see some players like MBL or Mr. Yogo for them. Uh, I mean, you can still do the whole Hoang thing pretty effectively. Like I said, a selling stone to get to Castle Age quickly is super good for Celts. Uh, but Celts still prefer the Dark Age where they can go for like a drush, and just make use of the fact that they get the faster working lumberjacks without needing double bit axe, whereas a lot of civilizations can just get double bit axe at the very start of the game, so it mitigates that advantage that Celts get just a little bit. Um, of course, Celts are still faster uh, once they also get double bit axe, but it's just not quite as good. Uh, the issue really comes in with the late Castle Age and early Imperial Age for the Civ, where you need to transition away from knights and archers uh, towards infantry, uh, which can be kind of tricky. Chinese, these guys are going right back to the S tier. Now, this is partially based off of the change that they got where it used to be that Chinese did not get their extra villagers at the start, and now they do. So you start with 31 villagers as opposed to 28, and although that's a much smaller like percentage increase compared to like six villagers to three, the fact that you have so much of an economy working right away means that you have very little idle TC time. So Chinese actually do quite well in high villager starts, which is why we see them a lot on two TC maps. Um, and that's going to help springboard their economy. And then in a game mode that's so centered in like extended feudal age, extended castle age, these sorts of things, Chinese with their super good economy and flexible tech tree, uh, they're just going to be shining on pretty much every map. I would imagine we're going to see a lot of Chinese in this tournament on, like, a ton of different maps. Cumans going to be going in the A tier, another sieve that likes to skip Dark Age. Uh, you get the discounted archery ranges and stables right from the very beginning of the game, and that means you can apply a ton of pressure with this sieve. You just, like, drop two ranges super fast pump out archers, and just keep on with the aggression. It's very different to how you like to play with the Civ and RM, where you go for like the 2TC boom. We could see this a little bit, but it's still going to be super risky on a map, and, or map types and game mode that is so aggressive. 
Uh, but it's still an option available that we always have to keep in mind. And then, you know, you have great mobility. You can go for, like, the archers and the knights and mid-game uh, really effectively. Empire Wars, it's like the uh, the anti-clown game mode, right? So we're not going to see as many, you know, like, infantry plays or monk plays. It's going to be very focused around the archers and the cavalry, sort of your bread and butter Age of Empires, the, you know, meta that we see all the time. It's, it's what Empire Wars really sort of... Uh, pushes players towards just because it's so open and aggressive again with the maps in mind as well dravidians are going to be going into the c tier you do start with 200 extra wood and i was thinking of maybe bumping them up to b tier but still missing that mobility component due to not having knights and just having terrible cavalry in general does mean you're just so painfully slow that said, going for a bunch of elephant archers could be really good at, like, pushing a certain area. Uh, I mean, you have, you know, strong infantry and skirmishers and archers and all that stuff if you need them. So it, it's, like, okay. Their monks are pretty bad, which is unfortunate. Um, but you're if we're going to see this sieve, it's to hit some really aggressive timings with that extra 200 wood that they start with. Uh, but humans kind of do that as well, and they also have super good mob mobility options, so it's kind of like, why not just play humans, right? Ethiopians going to be going into the A tier as well. They used to have their 100 food and gold at the start from advancing to the feudal age, and then that was taken away. Now it's back, so you start with 300 food and 200 gold, and that's super awesome. It just gives you that much more uh, flexibility in your openings. You can usually afford to get your eco upgrades and stuff like that. Go for your faster firing archers, go for some spearmen, get that free pikemen upgrade, and just do the things that Ethiopians are normally good at doing. Again, this is a civilization that loves skipping the Dark Age, and not only do you skip the Dark Age, but you just get those power spikes right away from the very beginning of the game. You're still missing a little bit in the mobility, de mobility department due to having poor cavalry, but Ethiopians still have plenty of stuff to be happy about, and we're going to see these guys, I think, quite a lot throughout the event. Franks, also going to be going into the A tier. It's just A tier city, man. You do get your farm upgrades for free, so just savings there right off the bat when you normally can't afford to get a horse collar early on in most situations. Um, and then you have all of your forage bushes, so you get to make use of that bonus. Strong scouts off the bat with your 54 HP. Yes, you struggle in extended feudal age circumstances when Bloodlines comes in, which makes things like a little bit awkward on maps that we see a ton of mass scouts play like Atacama. Uh, but still, at the end of the day, Franks are super good. They're super streamlined. Cheap castles you can drop offensively or defensively. And then, you know, just do your Franks.exe. Really powerful sieve. Not flexible in terms of your, like, army compositions, but they are very flexible in terms of you can play them very aggressively or very defensively. And that's something that is very helpful uh, in Empire Wars, where you really do need to play to those early aggressive strengths. You can't typically afford to just sort of play very, very safe and passively. You have to be decisive. That's, again, why we see so much market usage. Goths, going in the D tier. Uh, you really don't have, like, any bonus with Goths. Infantry play is typically pretty bad. They're just too slow of a civilization to get going. Yes, you know, maybe we see... I was going to say Vinchester, but Vinchester couldn't make the event. It was really sad. We don't even have Vinchester, so who who's going to play Goths in the tournament now, man? Uh, yeah, I, I doubt we'll see Goths much, if at all. Maybe, like, once or twice as, like, a random corner pick. But Goths, they love the Dark Age. They like going for, like, the early laming stuff. Super aggressive drushes, men at arm rushes. They need those early Dark Age opportunities to leapfrog them ahead in the Feudal Age, where they have, like, no bonus. Um, you also don't get to make use of the fact that Loom researches instantly, so you don't even get to be, like, a villager ahead. So, Goths, they, they lose out a lot in Empire Wars, because unlike some of these other civs, they love the Dark Age. I mean, the Goths, like, created the Dark Age real, in real life, so they're sad they don't get to do that in Empire Wars. Gujurs, another A-tier civ. Um... You do have six sheep, like I said, so you don't quite get the eight sheep, but with the way that they changed the Gujur mill garrison bonus, it doesn't make, I think, that much of a difference. And we're still looking at a civilization that thrives in the Castle Age, uh, your camels, your Shrivunsh riders, with like monk siege infantry -y sorts of plays being, I think, a bit weaker, then that's where Gujurs, you know, become even better because they don't love facing those things until they can get like Chukram throwers out. 
Um, but yeah, you still have those guys as an option uh, later on in the game. Typically, we don't just like sit back and like have a, a trash unit plus gold unit sort of army going because Gujars they don't like playing trash units. They like playing with multiple gold units. You still, you know, there are situations where you wish you had knights. Um, and not having like decent pikemen maybe could be a bit of an issue. I don't think they're quite S tier. Your eco is solid, but it's not like insanely good like Aztecs and Chinese. Uh, you do get your forage bushes, so that's something as well. You get your extra 250 food uh, that you can gather. So so that's all nice, but yeah, Gujars, I, I think we should be seeing a lot of them. Uh, you know, lots of camels, lots of Shrivan Shriders, the stuff that you love facing on ladder. Hindustanis in a similar vein, and there are a lot of A-tier saves, guys. I promise, the, the final list is going to be, uh, you know, at least somewhat balanced. You do lose out a bit with Hindustanis because you don't get all of the food savings on your first, you know... 25 extra villagers but you still you know get that discount right from the beginning of the game um and it's the feudal age discount so it's you know uh, what 15 percent as opposed to 10 percent and then you have still really strong camels you do miss halberdiers so maybe they're going to be they'd be like one of the weaker a tier options because missing knights again could be a bit of an issue uh but you still have gulams they're still really good camels are great you know you go to late game shiitake hand cannoneers can work in a ton of situations as well uh, good bombard cannons, all that stuff. So yeah, I, I imagine we'll be seeing at least a fair amount of Hindustanis in the tournament. Huns. Now, these guys are going to be going in the B tier. And I don't even... It's, it's kind of unknown because Huns, they're a civilization that they're aggressive. They have great, you know, mobility options. You'd think that they'd be doing really well in Empire Wars. Uh, you do start with minus 100 wood. Is that enough to even bump them down to C tier? Actually, now they think about it. Yeah, it might be. Because Huns just are going to have a really slow start because what you do in Empire Wars is you immediately drop a stable or an archery range. Like, most of the time, with most civs. Huns can't do that because they only have 100 wood, so you have to wait a little bit. And that just ruins a lot of the aggressive potential that you have with the civ. That is pretty painful, like, you know, just in, in thinking about it. Maybe we won't see them that much. Like, once you sort of get past that, like, early awkwardness, uh, you do, you know, start to take off just fine. Faster working stables, Cav Archer, Mass in the mid game, all the sorts of things that you love Huns for. But just having that really awkward, like, first minute of gameplay, which is, like, not an issue in RM, right? Because the game is slow enough that you recuperate your initial wood losses, like, really quickly. Probably not going to be picked all that often. Inca is going to be in the B tier. We might see these guys occasionally just if Mayans and Aztecs are banned. Incas, they like being able to utilize their broad tech tree and strong counter options. It's a little slow for Empire Wars, but being able to produce Eagle Warriors like from the second the game begins is still really, really good. Uh, you get your llama. You get your llama. And like they're, they're still a good sieve, right? Incas, it, it's never a sieve that's like, oh no, I have Incas. I have lost the game. Like They're, they're still fine. We might not see them a ton, but they're still just too flexible, and they, they have strong options, uh, at, like just encountering whatever their opponents are doing, so I, I don't think I can put them lower than B tier. A civ I can put lower than B tier is Italians. Uh, you don't get the benefit of you know advancing to Feudal Age more cheaply. You do get to Castle Age and Imperial Age more cheaply, and you get the cheaper university upgrades. If we're talking about Northern Isles, then I think we're seeing them. And I think like, we'll probably see them more than Incas. And that's like where, you know, doing this tier list for like all of the maps kind of becomes like a little problematic, but I'm not doing like 10 different <laughs> tier lists. So we'll see this Civ on Northern Isles, maybe Shoals or something like that. Um, just because they are a good water Civ. Uh, but they're just civs that do what Italians do better on land maps. I mean, it's like they're not bad, and it, like you can win games with them. And I'm sure you know we will see that at some point, but probably not going to be the most popular. They're just better archer civs out there. Japanese are going to be in a very similar vein. Uh, they are civ that love having that early feudal age with their men at arm rush. That's out the window in Empire Wars. You don't get extra wood from all of your savings with drop off sites, so. You're down a mining camp uh, in savings, a mill in savings, and three lumber camps. So that's 250 wood that you would have otherwise saved in R uh, RM. So yeah, Japanese just lose a lot of their power. Again, we might see them on Northern Isles or Shoals because they are still a good water sieve, but I don't think we'll be seeing much of Japanese. Khmer, going to be going in the A tier as well. Um, you do get the barracks no matter what, so it's not like you don't get the savings that you would in RM, 
but you're still really flexible and you have a great economy. Expect to see the sieve a ton on Frigid Lake where uh, you can't build farms around your TC, so Khmer being able to place their farms wherever they want going to be very helpful on that map. You don't love facing a ton of very strong cav archers. Like, I've seen so much Khmer versus Tadars on Frigid Lake, and Khmer just always seem to struggle in that situation. But at the same time, you do have good cavalry options, you have decent archer options, and with the good eco, there's not really a whole lot to complain about with the Civ. And if you're just spamming Hussars in the late game with like some Halbs and Siege units and Skirms and whatever, like you're, you're, you're going to be fine. I, I imagine we'll be seeing plenty of this Civ. Uh, Koreans going to be going in the B tier. Uh, no Dark Age bonus, really. So, like, that's not a problem. You get your free archer upgrades right away. Cheaper archers. Uh, we might see them a bit on Northern Isles or Shoals because they have a good water play. Uh, actually, think of it, coming to think about it, Shoals especially, you have a lot of stone on the map. So you can see, like, maybe a bunch of towers spammed everywhere. I haven't seen that a lot in, like, the games that I've casted uh, on the settings, but maybe that's something we could be seeing for the uh, the tournament itself. Um, but at the same time, they're, they're still pretty slow. You don't have great cavalry options, so, you know, no super insane ecos. I, I, I don't think I can put them higher than B tier, but you still benefit, I think, from being in Empire Wars relative to RM, at least a little bit, which I think puts them in a bit of a better spot than uh, these guys. And then they also at least have knights at all, which makes them better than Bengalis and Dravidians, again, in these settings. Lithuanians, maybe B tier... I feel like I could justify either B tier or C tier with this sieve. I'm going to put them in C tier. I, I don't think we'll see them a ton. They're another sieve that likes the Dark Age. They can get for some... Uh, they do get their extra 150 food. So that, that is something they do get. But at the same time, you know, you can't go for like a super fast Drush because Drushes aren't a thing in Empire Wars. It's not like you can get to Feudal Age faster because you start in Feudal Age. So it's not like you have a ton of like ways to utilize that extra food in Empire Wars. And then you just kind of are playing a fairly generic Civ unless you can get a bunch of relics going, which I guess you can maybe on some maps. So like maybe we'll see some Lithuanians. Uh, again, if you want to play like that cavalry Civ thing, there are just better Civs up over here to do that with, um, at least most likely. I mean, you have a strong late game for sure. So it's not like Lithuanians are going to be bad, but I just don't think we'll be seeing them a ton throughout the tournament. The Civ I do think we'll be seeing a ton of is Magyars, easy S tier. You get the free forging upgrade. Like, Magyars, they have, like, no Dark Age bonus. And so many of their bonuses are geared towards, like, Feudal Age. So the Civ just shines. Uh, Scout Rush, super strong with this Civ. You just get that discount right away and the free forging, like I said. Uh, fantastic at playing, like, an extended Feudal Age, like, Scout battle. But unlike, say, Bulgarians, you can go for Crossbowmen and Castle Age, which is really helpful. Um, Cav Archers are also an option as you go throughout the game. And you just have these really, really sick timings. And I imagine we're going to be seeing a ton of Magyars throughout the event. Uh, good at pretty much all stages of the game. They don't have the eco of, say, Aztecs and Chinese, but their military options are so strong and these maps are so aggressive that I, I feel like Magyars are going to be a very, very popular pick. And they have been in previous Red Bulls, for sure. Malay going to be going in the D tier. I don't think we'll be seeing any Malay. Uh, you don't get to make use of their, you know, huge eco bonus of the faster researching age up to get to feudal age. I mean, you can do that with castle age, so it's like you can still hit some timings. Other civs just do that better. Your cavalry is really bad. It, it's kind of like their Dravidians, except Dravidians get, you know, the benefit of the extra 200 wood, whereas Malay don't get their feudal age bonus. Yeah, I, I just don't think we're going to be seeing Malay. Maybe on Northern Isles or something, or Shoals, but I seriously doubt it. Just not a good sieve for Empire Wars. Malian's going to be going in the B tier. Uh, they're fine. Malians are a fine sieve. Uh, you, get, you don't get to make full use of your wood savings, um, just because you start with a lot of buildings already constructed for you. Uh, but you have, you know, a pretty broad tech tree. Longer lasting gold could perhaps be useful in certain settings. You know, they're, they're just a good set. They're like Incas, right? You know, you're, you're never going to be like, oh no, Malians, I can't have anything to do. I'm just going to lose the game. Like that, that's not really a thing. Malians are just going to be fine in most cases. <laughs> say that's going to be better than fine is Mayans. Going to be going up to S tier. You do start with your extra villager, minus 50 food. It's a nice little thing. You get to make Eagle Warriors. You still have a very strong economy. It, they're probably not quite as good in Empire Warriors as they are in RM because they don't get to make as much use of the longer lasting resources with like boars and a bunch of sheep and deer and stuff like that. Uh, but you still actually have deer on some maps like Acclivity that you use all the time and I think even Arabia as well. Uh, I don't remember what their specific version of Arabia, but I think they have deer still on, on the uh, Red Bull version of the map. 
Um, but yeah, you know, you have the cheap archers, like, right from the very beginning of the game, and you can still do just all the normal Mayans things that make them such a fun sieve to play against. Just kidding. Uh, but yeah, my, my, Mayans are good. They're great on aggressive settings and archer settings, like I was explaining earlier with Britain, so Mayans are gonna be good. Mongols! It breaks my heart. <sighs> I can't put Mongols in D tier. I, I, it's just not in my nature. I'm just not allowed to do that. I'm going to put them in C tier. They're really not going to be a great Empire War Civ. The only reason I put them in C tier is because, uh, you know, a Mangudai walked into a bar and there was no counter. Maybe, like, in some very, very specific situations, but there's not even, like, a map that has, like, a ton of hunt. I doubt we're going to see Mongols. Like, we might see them once or twice. Okay, I, I, I have to put them in D tier, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ornlu the Wolf. Yeah. They're, they're just not going to be good. It's kind of like Goths, where it's like, okay, you get to late game, you can still make some crazy stuff happen, and it's like, never count out a Mongol player who's reaching Imperial Age on a similar footing as you, but Persians are kind of an interesting one. Mm, do I bump them up to B tier? Maybe. I, we Interestingly, before the tournament, like in the past couple of weeks, I have been seeing some players try out Persians in Empire Wars. Uh, you know, like, and, and the players who are going to be participating in the tournament. Because you do start with your extra 50 food and wood. Your town centers work faster from the very second the game starts. So that's all good. You know, you have decent archers in the mid game. You have strong knights. You have a good boom. You have a good late game. It's like there's nothing, like, really overbearing with the Civ. But I feel like the power level in Empire Wars specifically is high enough to justify them into B tier. Like, probably, again, in that similar vein to... A lot of these sims where you might be seeing them at the edge of some uh, drafts, but not like a, a super common pick for sure. Maybe on some hybrid maps as well, uh, where you're making a navy like a, on a frigid lake or shoals or something. Uh, poles are also going to be in the B tier. Uh, frigid lake is actually probably a map where we would see them a lot because you need to build the full farms around full works anyway to be getting uh, use of that bonus. But they're a sieve that normally likes the Dark Age. They like being able to wall up and play passively and just sort of get their farm eco going. Maybe go for like a men at arm tower rush thing so you can, you know, mine the stone and get the gold and go for like a castle drop and schlock to privileges and all that stuff. You can do that in Empire Wars, but it's just not quite as good. It's really hard to fully wall yourself. And then if you're playing polls and it's like super open and you're getting raided on your full works, then you're not really having a great time. We still might see them. Uh, Shoals as well. It's a slow enough map that you can just kind of hang back with poles and then just get to your supercharged late game. Uh, just spamming like Cavalier and Wing Tossars and Obooks everywhere and all that good stuff. So like I, I think we will be seeing at least some poles. Uh, probably not that much. Uh, but again, Frigid Lake and Shoals are probably going to be the maps where we see them played the most. Uh, Portuguese, uh, going to be going in C tier. Portuguese, even though they don't really have a Dark Age bonus, they like the slower game types where they can go for like a fast castle, like organ gun play where like everyone's working in like a low eco setting. Empire Wars tends to be a, a bit higher eco just because like you're staying in feudal age longer so it's not like you're know, like fast amphatorias or like clown stuff you know portuguese they're a clown sieve empire wars is the anti-clown setting maybe on northern isles and other water maps saracens i actually think you can justify s tier with this sieve. they are so good in empire wars you have the market super cheap drop that right away sell resources get to a good castle age time and nuke stuff with your siege archers that sort of play is really, really good. And then on top of that, you have a broad tech tree. You have good camels. You have cav archers, strong monks. You know, you have bombard cannons, hand cannons in the late game. Mamelukes, always an option. So there, there are things you can do with Saracens in pretty much every single setting. And I think we'll be seeing the Civ quite a lot. I think we'll probably see them banned a lot. Just because going for like small walls around your base and then fast castle crossbow. It, it's really, really good. I mean, it was nerfed a little bit with the uh, the crossbow price hike, but I, I still think it's a strong enough play that I, I think you can justify S tier because the Civ just does so many things in Empire Wars. Again, another Civ with no Dark Age bonus, but they, they love taking off from the Feudal Age. Uh, Sicilians, uh, I'm going to put them in B tier. They're fine. The Sicilians are a fine Civ. We might see them picked by some players. Uh, they're going to be pretty good in extended Feudal Age settings because of your reduced bonus damage for your scouts. Uh, farms with double the bonus from Horse Collar can be really effective, just not having to reseed them as much. You know, faster building TCs is a decent mid-game eco bonus. Can go for some castle drops. 
they're fine. Sicilians are a fine sieve. We might see them occasionally, just depending on whether or not the player, uh, you know, likes them, I guess. Slavs, uh, also going to be going to the B tier. Uh, you can, you know, get farming fairly early, and they are good in extended feudal age uh, situations just because of that faster farming. Uh, Datinets, uh, like spamming castles all over the place in, like, you know, late castle age could be pretty good as well. I don't think they're quite aggressive enough to make A tier, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some Slavs here and there on perhaps those more passively oriented maps, like, say, an enclosed or something. Yeah, I, I mean, they're, they're a decent sieve. You have your strong knight play, go for your monks and siege and all that stuff. Maybe some boyars if you're feeling wild later on. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, th I think we'll see some Slavs. Spanish, Spanish, Spanish. <sighs> Spanish, again, they like the Dark Age just because you can maybe wall up and then go to Castle Age and then go for, like, Conquistadors or something. Actually, I don't know. Maybe we'd see them, like, occasionally. Let's put them in C tier. Because you can, like, play Feudal Age, right? You know, you, you have all the units and techs. You just can't play Crossbowmen, which makes things really awkward. And you just don't really have that much of an eco bonus or a military bonus, so... At least not until the later stage of the stages of the game. Maybe we'll see them in some corner cases. I don't think we're going to be seeing them a bunch. But who knows? Maybe somebody just really feels like going for conquistadors. And you know, Spanish are going to be great for doing that. And it's one of those sibs that you can always make something happen with it. Tadar is going to be going in the A tier. I mean, you do start with two fewer sheepers, but... You still have the longer lasting sheep. The free thumb ring in early castle age makes for some really, really strong timings with your crossbowmen. It's like you get Ethiopian crossbowmen with slightly better uh, accuracy. Super good. You have the strong mobility options with your cavalry. You know, you have camels, step lancers, keshiks, all that good stuff. And then, you know, massing a bunch of stuff with, uh, or massing a bunch of cav archers and flattening a bunch of sieves. I don't think they're quite, again, aggressive enough in, like, feudal age to really justify S tier, but this is a sieve we're going to be seeing, I think, quite a lot of. You can see them on Arabia, see them on Frigid Lake, because you get to delay your farms a bit on Frigid Lake, which is pretty helpful. Yeah, there, there are a ton of different maps. Uh, see them a fair amount on Outcrop because of the hills. Uh, we saw that, I think, a fair amount back in the qualifiers, if I recall correctly, so... There are, I think, times and places that we're, we're going to be seeing Tadars, I think, probably in more drafts than they'd be missing. Teuton's going to be bumping us to a second row here in B tier. I mean, you start farming pretty quickly, get the, the farm discount, which is nice. They're still kind of slow. You know, your knights don't have husbandry, you don't have great archers. But still, you know, you have the conversion resistance, which could be nice if you're playing like knight v knight with monks mixed in. Um, or if you're facing like a camel sieve, then you can mix in like pikemen that are going to be pretty effective. And you do have a good boom and you do have a good late game. I don't think we're going to be seeing these guys a bunch, but again, maybe on some of your more slow settings, maybe you can make Teutons work. You know, locking down the map with Crenellation's castles, maybe in the late game, I don't really know. They're not actually the worst sieve for like extended feudal age play because those cheaper farms can really add up and you can pump out a ton of scouts. So that's, that's something, but... You know, again, another, like, all right, Civ. All right, just a few left. Turks, gonna be going in the B tier as well. Uh, you do get the extra armor for your scouts, right, uh, you know, in the beginning of the game, which is pretty handy if you're trying to defend against a bunch of, you know, archers or whatnot. Uh, free light cav in hitting castle age is pretty helpful. Go for a castle drop on a map like Atacama, where you're, like, making a bunch of scouts, but you also want to secure map control. Maybe something like Morass, possibly, where it's kind of a similar vibe. Missing elite skirmisher is still a bit of an issue, but you typically don't have to face as many archers as an RM because you're hitting castle age just a little bit faster. Yeah, I mean, like, Turks, they're fine. They're they're they're. Fine. You know, you can still go for your cav archers, your light cav, janissaries, bombard cannons, all that stuff is going to be pretty good. They're a clown sieve that can function reasonably well on these non clown settings. Vietnamese, guess what? B tier. Um, you, you know, you can get your eco upgrades discounted right away. You know, you don't really have much of a dark age bonus with the sieve, so that's going to be totally fine. Your archers and skirms are going to have more HP, even your cav archers uh, in mid game, which can be helpful. I don't think they're quite fast enough to really justify putting them in A tier, uh, nor is like their economy quite as explosive, but they're still just a really like rock solid sieve. You can play them on pretty much any setting and they're going to be fine. Um, especially they're going to be good versus archer sieves, of course, but you can still make them work versus uh, melee heavy sieves. And yeah, I mean, again, 
if you are like an archer sort of player, then Vietnamese are still going to give you everything that you want. You're just not going to really want to pick, pick them over Britons and Ethiopians, basically. And then last but not least, we have the Vikings. Oh, do we put them in A tier, B tier? Free wheelbarrow from the start of the game is pretty wild. But missing thumb ring really does hurt your like fast imp arb timing a lot. And you just have such a bad late game. Vikings are, are, are good. I actually am really torn on this. You know what? Let's give Vikings the benefit of the grass doubt. Let's put them in A tier. That I think is fine. Their eco is just so smooth and so powerful. Again, no real dark age bonus, but you just get, you know, from the second the game starts, that free wheelbarrow upgrade, free hand card upon hitting castle age. You still have good archer and pikeman play. Yeah, your monks are pretty sad, but, you know, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. So good stuff from there as well. And that is going to be the tier list, guys. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're looking forward to Red Bull Wallolo Legacy. Uh, got a pretty nice distribution of sieves once again. Um, I will be casting it again on my channel. It's in the, the description. So thank you all so much for watching. And oh yeah, for the first time, I get to shout out my uh, Patreon subscribers. Link for that's also in the description. So shout out guys to Tristan Pittard in the Great Wolf tier and Donnie Briggs in the Dire Wolf tier. Thank you guys so much for supporting my channel and thank all of you, of course, for just watching these videos. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you all next time.